In today's video, I'm gonna go over five things or mistakes that I have personally made over the last 10 years reselling. Recently, I've made the decision to begin a journey to become a full-time reseller. Uh, you can see that awkward and midlife crisis video right here. I'll also post a link down in the description if you wanna go watch it. But these are mistakes I do not want to make again going forward. I especially feel passionate about number five, so I saved it for last. So make sure you hang around so you can see what I'm talking about. If you have the attention span to make it past that 35 second introduction, congratulations and welcome to the channel. I'm Doug and this is Doug Sales. Now let's get to those mistakes. Number one is hoarding. We all know that buying things is the fun part, looking for treasure. Where's the gold? Yeah. Yes, so sourcing, hitting the thrift stores, garage sales, estate sales, that's the fun part. It's the part of the unknown and not knowing what you're going to find uh, that gets our blood pumping, right? It's like a drug, it's a rush, and it's honestly one reason I'm so passionate about reselling. Don't become a hoarder though. If you purchase it, resell it, right? Resell it. If you start stockpiling inventory, then you'll start to get overwhelmed and have that feeling of not knowing where to begin or that feeling you just you ever been like, I just don't know where to start. Well, then most of us just won't start. Do this instead. Pick a day or a few days or even a whole week and tell yourself on these days, I'm going to go sourcing, right? So like maybe you pick Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm going to go sourcing, right? Or even the whole week. It doesn't matter. So go out on those days and just source your little heart out. Don't forget to set yourself a budget though, because you don't want to go too crazy. But then when that period is over, do not buy another thing until what you source during that time period is listed. So this will not only keep your house from looking like the next episode of hoarding buried alive it was actually a real show and it's wild it's absolutely crazy i think it came on like a and e or something look it up it's wild it will also give you a sense of accomplishment and it'll keep you motivated to move forward number two on my list is organization being an unorganized can burn you out <laughs> real quick like not knowing where things are, not knowing what you're spending versus what you're making and bringing in, having inventory spread all over the house. Make sure you have proper stores for unlisted items. Make sure you have proper stores for listed items. Create some sort of system that really helps you find items once they sell. That way it's not too much of a hassle, right? I've been in situations where I sell a few things and I'm like, I immediately not sure where things are. So it's harder for me to get motivated to go look for those items and ship them out. I do eventually, but it's just the process is a little bit more painful because it's not organized, right? Plastic tubs can be your friends, but there are limitations because they're bulky. The insides of them all aren't always the same. So you may stack something in one tub one day, a bunch of stuff, and then it just fits completely different in another tub another day. But in the beginning, plastic tubs are your friend. They're cheap. You can go get them on sale. Also, there are some boxes out there, which is kind of the storage method I'm going to use going forward, like a certain dimension box that will fit t-shirts and shirts and stuff like that. Uh, those are out there. Those can be your friend. They can stack easily. They're easy to store and they're all the same size, right? So that will make it easy as well. Once I get all that set up, like I'll do a video on that and just show you if, you, if you're interested in that. I think this is a perfect time to tell you to uh, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss that video. <coughs> wink, wink. So I also have a spreadsheet that shows every penny of money that I'm sending out for the business, right? And I have that same spreadsheet to say, show everything that comes in, all the money that I'm making. So this makes it easier for me to see what items is selling, what items aren't selling, and what my take home profit for not only each item, but for like each deposit I get from these platforms. It's easier to keep track of those to see what's making me the most money. It also helps me see how much profit I made that week, that month, and eventually the year. All right, number three on my list is inconsistent income. This can really make you feel like you're not doing enough. Maybe you have a bad month of sales and you feel like, oh, I just don't know if I should be doing this. Inconsistent income is kind of a tough one because that's just the nature of the beast when it comes to reselling. You know, we signed up for this, so it's not always gonna be consistent. Like if you aren't making the type of money that you hoped you would, I'm not talking about after one or two months, I'm talking about consistently for like three or four months you know you gotta gotta give it time to like balance out potentially like take three or four months and say hey what was the average that i made in those three months well 
that's probably what you can count on for your salary or for your take home pay. But if you hit that three to four month period and sales aren't increasing or they're suffering, uh, then maybe it's time to reevaluate. This is what you can do to try to keep from being burnt out. Reevaluate, go through everything, uh, maybe branch out to some slightly different items. Uh, maybe your pictures are bad. Compare your pictures to other items that are similar that are selling and yours aren't. Maybe some of the items that you have just aren't desirable. Like I know I've plenty of times I've been in a thrift store or a garage sale and I'm like, oh man, this is so cool. I would like to sell it. And then you get home and you're like, maybe I overshot on this. It's a very common item and it's gonna be really hard to sell. So yeah, the way to keep from getting burnt out in this situation is just hit that reset button and do some research on some different items. I'm always researching on what's selling and looking for other items that I may be interested in that I could potentially bring into my inventory and that I can look for in my sourcing efforts. That in itself has rejuvenated me so many times and given me something else to look forward to. Uh, so always keep challenging yourself and don't be afraid to switch things up if you need to. Number four on my list is that it's time consuming. This is a very time consuming job. I remember when I first started reselling in like 2013 or 2014, I remember thinking how easy this could be just to you know flip a few bucks, you know, buy some stuff, resell it, flip a few bucks. Then I became passionate about it and then I wanted it to become a legitimate source of income. It's a lot of work, guys. <laughs> it's time consuming. And if you feel like it's becoming too time consuming, then you may feel overwhelmed and just stop. I know I have. One of my recent episodes of stopping reselling last summer was because the I felt like the time that I was putting into it, I wasn't getting back the pay that I thought I should be earning. Looking back on it now though, I was actually, I had just not hit that stride yet. And I stopped before I hit the stride because it was too time consuming all of my free time was going into it. So I stopped. I've been there, guys. I'm giving you these tips and these mistakes because I've done them. So this time around, I have bigger goals in mind. I will tell you again, I recently decided to start a journey to become a full-time reseller. Yes, I want to quit my career and do this full-time. May not sound smart to most people, but I have different goals in mind. But this time around, so far, when I'm getting things ready again, I am trying to do certain things in small windows to see what I can get in a certain amount of time. For example, the other day I got home from work, I said, I want to see how many pictures I can take of my inventory to get them ready in an hour's time. That's simply just setting things up, taking pictures of them, taking measurement of its clothes, and then storing it away. That answer for what I could do in an hour's time is 26. So I know I can come in and get 20 to 26 pictures taken in an hour's time. I'm doing this with all different stages of reselling so I can have in my mind what I can get done in a certain amount of time. That way it won't feel so overwhelming and it won't feel as time consuming. So that's one thing you can do to try and help it not feel so time consuming. On top of that, there are a lot of tools out there that can help you do things faster. All for a price, of course. You gotta make sure you're making that money to pay for those services. But especially if you're cross-posting, there's software out there. The most recent one I found is a site called List Perfectly. It's like 30 bucks a month uh, for the bottom tier plan, but it allows you to cross post to multiple platforms at a time. So instead of posting to eBay, posting to Poshmark, posting to Depop or wherever else you post, you can do it all with one click. So there's a tool that'll help you be more productive. Also, there is a photo editing software that I use called Photo Room that will not only remove the background and let you do like a white or a colored background for your items, it will also optimize all your pictures so that it fits in every platform so you're not fighting the crop and edit feature in eBay or in Poshmark or whatever, right? Because there have been times where I've taken a picture and it fits perfectly on eBay, but it's too big for Poshmark or too big for Depop. And so you just, you end up fighting it, right? This. These are tools that you can use that will help your productivity. So there are things out there that can help you from this seeming so time consuming. Number five is the one that I am especially passionate about now. And I think it's really going to help me going forward. It's going to help me keep moving on, but it is setting a goal. So setting a goal for me, looking back right now, now in my journey to become full-time, this is going to be the most important thing that I do. Not having a goal and just aimlessly posting whatever and whenever may work for a very casual reseller and there's nothing wrong with that, okay? If that works for you, then just keep doing it. But if you're wanting this to become a legitimate source of passive income or even full-time income, like I'm hoping, 
to turn it into uh, a year from now, then you must have a goal. In the past, I wanted this to be a passive source of income, meaning I just wanted some extra money. I really didn't need it because I have a good job. I have a good career. So I wasn't relying on the money. So I just did it whenever and whenever I felt like it. Uh, not having a goal to work toward did not keep me motivated. And I would quit for weeks at a time, sometimes months at a time or even more. But setting yourself a goal, even if it's just like $500 profit a month, like make that your goal. For some people that's a car note, right? Or it takes care of your phone bill or your utilities or whatever. Just make sure you're reaching that goal every month. And if you aren't, then you know you need to do more to reach that goal and you know what you're capable of. Then once you hit that goal, you'll know, hey, this is my threshold. This is what I can do and I can reach this goal. But if you've hit that goal and it's not your threshold, you're like, man, I, I can still do more. Well, then set yourself another goal and then reach that goal. Or you can just maintain the other goal if that $500 is enough for you, maintain that goal. That can be your motivation going forward, making sure you hit that goal every month. Not ever having a goal in the past was probably my biggest downfall and biggest mistake as a reseller. Now that I have a goal to become a full-time reseller and YouTuber, yes, I'm going to keep running this channel. I also have two gaming channels. I'll put those links down in the description if you're a gamer and you wanna check them out. But now that I have that goal going forward, I have something to work towards and I'm excited about it. All right, guys, those are five mistakes that can cause you to burn out reselling real fast if you don't watch it. I enjoyed talking about these. I enjoyed going over these in my head when I was writing these out. And I was uh, even more excited to relay this information to you guys. And even if all this is stuff that you just know, hopefully this is just kind of a refresher for you, something to re-motivate you. I may even come back and like watch this video of myself again, just to remind myself that, hey, I'm giving people this advice, so I hope they take it as well. If you have other things that burn you out quickly, I'd love to hear them down in the comments. Even if you're a new viewer, just say, Hey, say hello. I love to hear from you. But thanks for tuning in, guys. I appreciate it. Hope you guys kill it this week, this month, whatever you're doing. Hope you reach your goals. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.